Shalom, Shalom, Yasharala. This your brother Pawaria from Great Millstone, Des Moines, coming back at you with another quick lesson. Lord willing, through Yahweh by Shem Yahushad, that this, this lesson be edifying. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahushad, by Shem Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles at Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to all the out there that's pushing his word in truth, sincerity, and in charity. Brakatham Yum. All right. Um, the title of this lesson is going to be called The Value of Righteousness or um, The Reward of of your righteousness or something along those lines all right because there's a great reward and you seeking um righteousness seeking this word and seeking this truth there's a great reward with it so we're gonna just um get some scriptures to confirm these things and we're gonna start off with zephaniah 2 and 3 it says seek ye the lord yahweh by shim yahweh shai all ye meek of the earth which have wrought his judgment seek righteousness See, that's the main thing. We should be seeking righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. All right. So if you want to be hid, be protected. When the Lord come and bring his wrath upon this place, man, you want to seek after his righteousness. You want to be on his right hand side, man, and not on his left hand side. All right. So this, so we should be seeking after Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right, so uh, let's get some more scriptures. Uh, let's start. Let's read uh, Proverbs. Let's go into Proverbs, man, and read. We're gonna start with Proverbs 11, and we're gonna start with 4. It says, Riches profit not in the day of wrath. But righteousness delivereth from death. See, so even through our righteousness, man, it's going to deliver us from the death and destruction that is about to come to this place, man. And it said riches profit nothing in those days, man. So in them days, man. All right. So here it is. You got people seeking out of the riches of this world. That ain't going to get you nowhere when the Lord come and bring his wrath upon this place, man. It ain't going to do nothing for you. Uh. Uh, let's read on. It says, The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. When a wicked man dieth, his expectation shall perish, and the hope of unjust men perish. The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. See, so the Lord is going to deliver us um, out of all our troubles, man. So when all the troubles of this that's coming upon this place, the Lord is going to deliver us out of those things. And instead, he going to let all that fall on the wicked, you know. All right, so let's jump down to uh, verse 30. It says, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that went of souls is wise. So that's another thing we should be doing, man. We should be trying to bring people into this truth, man. But of course, it's only for the elect. The elect is going to hear this truth, and they're going to receive it, and they're going to live and die for this truth all the way until the end and endure to the end, man. It says, Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. Much more the wicked and the sinner. So, hey, the righteous got a reward. And, and the sinners and the, the Lord's enemies also have a reward. All right. So it's which reward that you want to you wanna receive, man. All right. Let's jump. Um, let's get a scripture in Wisdom of Solomon. And it's going to be Wisdom of Solomon 18 and 7. It says, so of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous and destruction of the enemies. Now, this right here is, is, is referring to when we was in Egypt. All right. But now how much more now in this last Egypt that we living in now, the Lord is about to give unto his righteous salvation and destruction to his enemy. 
But this time he's going to even destroy two thirds of his own people. Why? Because you heard this word and you thought it was absurd. So now you consider it as two thirds. All right. You're, you're, you're nothing to, you know what I'm saying? You're considered like two thirds being flushed down the toilet. All right. So that's why you're the two thirds. Cause you didn't take heed. You, you heard this word and you rejected it. So the Lord is going to reject thee. All right. Plain and simple, man. Cause, uh, some of the ingredients that you need in this man is, uh, faith. You need works. All right. And of course, you got to have both of those. Those goals uh, that goes hand in hand. All right. You got to have faith and works. All right. Because when you read James 2 and 20, it tells you that faith without works is dead. So you got to have you have to, you have to have faith and works. Those are the main ingredients. Obedience. Those that's a main ingredient that you have to have that's going to lead you uh, to salvation. Also, when you read in Colossians 3 and 12. On down to uh, 17, it says put on as the elect. So these are more ingredients that you're going to need if you want to be a part of that elect, man. All right. These are the, the ways of righteousness. This is what's going to lead you to the rewards that the Lord have for us, man. He got many rewards and that's um, awaiting us, man. So hey, this is this you, you know what I mean, if you receive this truth, you're on the right path. You just have to continue on this path and not turn back. It ain't no turning back once you hear this truth, man. You know? Alright. So uh let's get some more scriptures, cause there's plenty of scriptures, you know. Um, as you can see, this pictures right here. You can see this is you know what I'm saying? Yahweh Shah putting that crown of life upon your head, man. That's like, you know what I'm saying? Being graduated. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you graduated from high school and you got that that crown, you got that, that diploma, man, you finally threw, man. It's like, man, you relieved. This how, That's how it's going to be, man. When you finally get to see Yahweh Shah, he's putting that crown of life upon you, man, on you. You know, and giving you the the the, uh, the promises, the kingdom, the things that he promised us, man, that's going to be a, a great reward, man, if you just stay steadfast in this truth and endure to the end. Right. So, yeah, let's. Uh, let's get Hebrews. Um, Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to the most high power must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we have to be seeking, like we read in that Zephaniah 2 and 3, seeking righteousness, man, because Yahweh Shai is righteousness, all right? So we should be seeking after him, man, diligently, all right? Because that's that's our ticket, that's our way out, man, out of this hellhole. And it's impossible to please him without faith, man. And that faith is going to bring forth works, it's going to bring forth obedience, it's going to bring forth all these things that you're going to need to receive salvation all right so uh proverbs let's get some let's get a few scriptures because it's in a lot of scriptures in proverbs that talks about the righteous and their rewards so we'll just start off proverbs I'm going to read 13. 13 and 21. It says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. Is that what I want? Oh, no, no. It says, Proverbs 13, 21. Evil pursue sinners. Evil pursue sinners, but to the righteous, good shall be repaid. So, 
good is going to come to the to the righteous, man. We're going to be paid for our righteousness, our labors that we're putting in this. The Lord is going to reward us in these things, man. We have a great reward coming unto us if we just endure to the end and don't turn back to this world. Because this world is not going to give you nothing but death and destruction. Things that, that's going to come to naught. Things that are temporary, man. You should be storing up your, your treasures in heaven. Those are the things that can't no one take away from you. I, uh, Proverbs 14 and 2. It says, he that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despise him. So if you fear the Lord, man, you're going to walk in in, in, um, in your uprightness. Cause you, why? Because you fear the Lord. You don't want to see that death and destruction come upon you. So you want to be walking on eggshells, so to speak, man. You want to do the things that are well-pleasing until you how about shimmy out shy. You don't want to go off, man. But of course, in this wicked, this wicked body we in, this defiled, this defiled body that we're in, we're going to go off, man, because it's the flesh, man. All right. But that's why you have to tame your flesh, man. You have to feed your spirit so that your flesh can starve. All right. Jump down to uh, verse 12. It says, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So you don't want to lean towards your own understanding. You know, you want to you want to make sure you in the path and in, 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 uh, of your how by Shem Shai, you know, doing his will. All right. Not leaning towards your what you think is right, because what you think is right might not be right. with you have by Shem Shai, and those things will lead you unto death, man. Uh, read the skipping around uh, verse 27 it says the fear of the Lord is the fountain of life to depart from the snares of death so ultimately man you have to fear your by Shem Yahweh Shai man if you want to be uh, departed from the snares the, the pits the traps of death that this devil is putting before you man cause you're gonna have to have the spirit of your by Shem Yahweh Shai upon you to make it through the things, the, the bad times that's coming to this place, you got to have the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. That's why it's important to constantly be praying that the Lord keep his spirit upon you and never take it off of you, man. Uh, let's jump down to 32. It says, the wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous have hope in his death. It says, uh, 34, righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to many people. Proverbs 15 and, uh, it says, Proverbs 15 and 6, it says, In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. <laughs> see, see, all these things are rewards that we're going to be having, man. We're going to have treasures, you know. All kinds of treasures, man. We're going to have a kingdom, man. It's, it's going to be the, the ground made with floors. and I mean, the ground, you know, made with gold. You know, the floors and everything. It's, you know, it's going to be a beautiful thing. Okay. Uh, uh, let's, let's read 8. It says, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayers of the upright is his delight. So even our prayers is a delight to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. He's going to answer our prayers. All right. The Lord is going to answer our prayers. He hears us crying out unto him. It is a delight unto him to hear us crying out to him, man. Knowing that we hate this place because the Lord hate this place. Now, as a matter of fact, with that, let's get that in. Um, let's see. James. That in James. Now I'm gonna read James <clears throat> five and sixteen. Hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Five and sixteen. It says, "Confess your faults one to another, 
and pray one for another that ye may be healed. So, hey, man, we should be uh, praying for one another, praying for ourselves, confessing our sins and praying to one another that we may be healed, man, that we may be healed out of this place because there ain't no hill in Babylon. Ain't no hill in this place, man. OK, it says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And when you go into that word availeth, it means uh, power. It means force. So that means that your prayers, it has power behind it. It has force. And the Lord can use your prayers to uh, allow powerful things to happen, miraculous things to happen in your life. Okay? So prayer is power. Prayer is a weapon, man. Your faith is a weapon. All these things are are the weapons that you're going to need to fight against this spiritual principality that we're up against, man. All right? Because the devil, he ain't playing around. You can see this devil is, is working overtime. So, hey, we have to be in. <laughs> we got to be working overtime as well, man. Have to be living this, man. Okay? Uh, back in that Proverbs. Uh, what was that? Uh... Uh, I'll just read Proverbs 15 uh, and 29. It says, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayers of the righteous. So once again, man, the Lord is going to hear our prayers. And, and he's going to answer our prayers, man. So we got to constantly keep praying out to him and, and, and um, have patience, man. Long suffering in this thing. Uh, Proverbs 16 and 12, it says, read down, it says, It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. And so the Lord is, is about to establish a whole kingdom where it dwelleth in righteousness. Okay? This kingdom we living in, this queendom we living in, it, it's no righteousness in this place. It's nothing but wickedness that fulfills this place, man. You should be vexed in this place. That's why it what's that Proverbs uh twenty nine and two? It says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wet when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Right now it's a this these people are mourning, man. People are mourning in this place. <laughs> you know? But when the righteous are in authority, when the Lord set up his kingdom in righteousness, everybody's gonna rejoice, man. You know what I'm saying? So, man, we should be seeking this kingdom, man. All right? Having big faith and believing that these things are going to come to pass. Because whether you believe it or not, these things shall come to pass. Uh, let me see. Uh, let's go to Proverbs 21. And let's read 18. It says the wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the transgressor for the upright. Jumping down to 21, it says he that follow after righteousness and mercy find of life, righteousness and honor. So these are just scriptures, man, that, that show you, man, that what you should be seeking for. You know, because it's a great reward when doing so. Let's jump um, to Psalm 7. And we're going to read Psalm 7. And 8. It says, The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness. And according to my integrity that is in me. Alright. So you want the Lord to judge you by your righteousness. So it's like man. All throughout our life. For, for the most of us. All throughout the majority of our life. We have been doing nothing but wickedness. Okay. But now that you heard this truth. You should turn away from your wickedness. It should behoove you to turn away from your wickedness. Because you're going to be rewarded for your righteousness. Okay. So what you should want to do is repent and then for the for the, the the longevity of your life as you living, 
you should be seeking out the Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and not the things of this world. Psalms 45 and 7. Thou loveth righteousness and hateth wickedness. <laughs> See, right here, man, you should love righteousness and you should hate wickedness. So the things that are wicked, man, the things that are contrary to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, you should hate it. You shouldn't want no parts of it. You know, no dealings because it's going to lead you to death and destruction. We want, man, we want life, everlasting life. All right. It says, thou, uh, Psalms 45 and 7, thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. Before, therefore, the most high power, thy, thy power have anointed thee with the oil of gladness. Above thy fellows. Alright man. So it's just another. All these things is. Is what we going to be given. If we just. Uh, hold fast to this righteousness man. Alright. Uh, Psalms 45. Let's see. 1 Corinthians. And of course man. We going to. We gonna fall short, man. You know, I know, and don't be discouraged because somebody can read the scripture where it talks about our right, our righteousness is like filthy rags, and somebody can be simple and be like, "See, man, all our righteousness is like filthy rags anyway, so I might as well just do what the hell I want." And you know what I'm saying? Nah, that's not the way. You know what I'm saying? That's that's not the way to think. That's the wrong mindset, man. All right, I, I think it talks about that in Isaiah 64 and 6, where our righteousness is filthy rags. Hey, Amen. But the Lord, man, he sees you. Uh, he sees us trying, man. He sees those that are sincere, those that are trying. And he's going to take that righteousness and, and he's going to take it to, to, the, to the father. Like, man, look, he been trying. He been doing this. You know, he, he feel like shit when he messes up. You know, he repent. He's repenting. You know what I'm saying? He's not all like these sinners that's constantly doing these things over and over and have no remorse for it. All right. And it tells you in Proverbs uh, 24 and 16 that a, a just man falls seven times, but you get your ass back up. All right. You ain't, you ain't going to fall and just uh, return to that vomit and just stay there. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. Nah, man, you got to get up and, and get out that that. That vomit and, and move around. Uh, what else I gonna get? Uh, First Corinthians one and thirty. This First Corinthians one and thirty. It says, "But if him." Are ye in Yahweh Shamashiach, who of the most high power Yahweh is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption? These are some man, the Lord is about to give us these things. He's about to give us righteousness, man. He's about to cleanse us. He's about to redeem us. These are things, man. That, it's, it's a beautiful thing, man, that to hear these words, it should be like music, you know, unto your, your spirit, man, to know that the Lord loves you and that he got a reward that he promised unto us that he's going to surely give unto us, man. All right. Uh, let me get this in Hebrews, back in Hebrews 10. And Hebrews 10 and 35, it says, cast not away, therefore, our confidence, which have great recompense of reward. So don't cast away your confidence, meaning with faith, you don't don't let go of your faith in this, man. I don't care how hard it get, how hard the afflictions get. Man, you rejoice in all things, man. Rejoice in your affliction. Rejoice because it's a great reward in that in the long run, man. 
All right. So we have to always constantly be rejoicing, man, even when we're going through good times and bad times. We constantly rejoicing because some of the times we go through these bad things and, and it allow us to grow. It allows you to, uh, you know what I'm saying, to he put you in another position where you're growing. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be uncomfortable positions or things that you got to go through. But in the long run, he's setting you up to receive the kingdom, man. Put that crown on your head, you know. Well, you got to, you know, sometimes you got to be torn down to be built up. And that's what the Lord right now is doing. And he's building us up for this kingdom, man, that he's got in store for us. Call the law, man. The righteous is going to, it shall rejoice. Let's get that in uh, uh, Psalms 58. This Psalms 58 and 10. It says what? The righteous shall rejoice when he sieve the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Whew. Man, man, man. That's a time. That, that, that reminds me of that my one of my favorite scriptures in Baruch 4 and 24 and 25. We're going to get that, Lord willing, man. Because, hey, man, it's going to be, we should rejoice when the Lord bring his vengeance upon this place, man. Rightfully so, because this place is wicked. And, and if you want to dwell in this wickedness, man, you you are wicked. If you want this place to continue on, you are you just a wicked uh, soul, man. All right. Matter of fact, let's get that in Baruch. And then just end it with, you know. Yeah, there's so many scriptures that you can bring out, you know what I'm saying, that can uplift you. In the times we living in, man, when things going bad, hey, man, just, hey, walk the right path. And the Lord is going to um, deliver you out of these things that's coming. Got to have faith in these things, man. This is our only hope, man. This is our only hope up out of this hell hole is this word this, that the Lord promised unto us. This Baruch 4. Let's see, Baruch. Um, 4 and 24 and it says like as now the neighbor of Zion have seen your captivity so shall they sh uh, see shortly your salvation from our power Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting my children suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the most high power for thy enemy have persecuted thee but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck all right so the lord gonna put that spirit upon us uh teach our hands to uh to fight uh when you read in psalms 144 and 1 you know what i'm saying he gonna put that spirit upon us to fight against our in against our enemies man and see the, the downfall of, man, of this place Man, that's that's something I want to live for. Man. I want to see. I want to be a part of that, man. To see this this devil go down, <laughs> you know. Uh, I'm gonna end it with this and Revelations. I'm gonna read Revelations 22 and 12. And it says, uh, Revelations 22 and 12, it says, and behold, and this is Yahweh Shai speaking, man. Man, and this time we live, we, we're living in these times, man. Right now, we're living in the book of Revelations. All right. Um, it says, Revelations 22 and 12, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. So the Lord is coming quickly, man, to this place and rewarding. And he's he got a great reward for those uh um for every everybody got a reward coming, man. And you want that reward to be salvation, man, and not destruction. Okay. Uh hey, so Lord willing, I hope that this was edifying, man. You know, through the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. Um 
Let me see. I had a uh, couple of pictures that I got from the brother from uh, San Francisco. You know, let me just go through a couple of them. Like right here, you got, man, our kids, man. This is a reward to see our kids, you know what I'm saying, playing with the birds, flying with the birds, with the animals. You know what I'm saying? These are things that we that we are about to receive, man. That kingdom where our kids playing with lions and tigers and bears, you know, elephants. All of these things, man, is the, is a reward. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna come um to us, man. You know what I'm saying? Isaiah four and one, man. Uh, the women cleaving unto us, man. Having uh, uh women and these women are gonna be in their right mind, man. They ain't gonna be going off. Like they go, like they do now, man. You know what I'm saying? Having a kingdom, having, you know what I'm saying? Servants, you know, having our, our, our own, um, our own throne. You know what I'm saying? The Lord is going to give us all these beautiful things, man, that we can imagine. The Lord is going to give us these things. Uh, uh, hopefully you can see these pictures. Oh, man. Uh, let's see. Yeah, man, these are beautiful things that the Lord got in store for us, man. A kingdom which endure of righteousness is going to be peace, harmony, you know, justice. It's, everything is going to be perfect. All right. This right here can be, you know what I'm saying? This can be your front, your front line. You know what I'm saying? Your front or your backyard, you know, however, man, the Lord is going to allow us to be creative in that kingdom, man. You know, hey, so, uh, Lord willing, this was edifying through Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, through the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. This be edifying, man. And, um, uh, first and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai for allowing me to do this lesson. The water Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to the apostles at Great Millstone who rule well. Um, salutations to all the Akims out there that's pushing his word in truth, sincerity, and in charity. Baraka Thumb, Aki Yum, we almost out this hellhole. Let's keep pushing. Let's hold fast to our faith because we out here. I mean, because we almost out of here, man. Our salvation draws nigh. All right. So just remain uh, meek in this thing, man, and humble. And the Lord is going to give us the reward that he's promised us. All right. Shalom, Aki Yum. A ball, but ball.